So, hello, welcome back to another episode of the Self Development with Tactics podcast. And I'm really, really, really stoked to be here and um, to talk about the things that we are gonna talk about today, whatever it might be. Um, probably some red things, I guess, once again, um, for the sake of time and it being not very, well, it being quite time efficient. And um, I, yeah, that's quite it. That's the only reason that I'm having here. Uh, anyway, so let's actually see if there's something on Reddit <laughs> that I could be talking about. Let's just have a look. Let's just have a look at things. Let's just try to figure out things. Because maybe we can find certain things, certain cool things. Or whatever. More things you should not do according to the Stoics. Don't be all about business. That's very, 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 very vaguely... Uh, sad, I would say, you know, because one could interpret a ton of things. What I'm seeing there is, okay, uh, I am not going to care about humans' lives because I do want to do my good business, you know? For example, this is what I'm seeing there in this, well, not context, but but saying something like that. You know, I just immediately have to think about a person that really gives a fig, <laughs> a fig, yeah, a fuck about or doesn't give a fuck about anything, but doing business. Anyway, don't put off to tomorrow what can be finished today. Don't shun people you disagree with. Don't sleep the day away. Don't neglect your friendships. Very important, by the way. Something that I kind of have forgotten about from time to time, and also very, very recently, which made me feel just so incredibly bad but i am trying to um get ahead with it i'm trying to get better at it i'm trying to really make sure that i'm taking care of those relationships that i'm having because i know what it is like to um to lose a relationship to know that one fucked up a relationship because one uh, didn't put too much effort into it and that's not a good feeling, and this is not what things should be like, besides the whole fact that having healthy relationships and having friends and friendship, one of the most important things there is, you know, one of the things that, um, well, I don't know, like, <clears throat> one of the things that, that really makes me happy, you know, being with friends, having a great talk, and so on and so forth, anyway. I have realized that I want to look moral to other people, but I'm not actually moral at all. Something that I had to think about as well, by the way. But yeah, let's see. I've been uh, taking a good hard look at myself lately and realized that I'm just not a good person. I have a whole slew of bad habits, whining, no discipline, entitlement, manipulation, materialism, a deep feeling that I that I am owed and personality traits that I refuse to address because I feel entitled to being accepted without any effort of my part or on my part. I care about no one in my life, not my friends, family or even myself. Whenever I see or hear someone dispagging a trait or habit that I have, I get all panicky and defensive. I will then constantly look for reassurance that having that trait doesn't make me a bad persona, and when I find that sympathy, I go right to how I was. Having made no improvements or efforts to improve at all, again, this is just one or two bad habits. It's a multiple bad traits that outweigh any good ones. Um, what I have to think about there is having a harsh look and hard look at oneself is incredibly important. But, you know, there also needs to be balance, you know? I mean, I can say that I may not be as moral, at least at this point in time, I have been way better regarding that uh, some, well, probably one or two years ago. But at this point, I really suck at it. Um, I do often get angry. I do often 
feel like being a shitty person to other people and yada 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 i mean yes period but the thing is i there's also some things that i've improved at like i don't know i for me it is always like seeing the balance in things but staying more to the the harsh side of things you know not being like okay i'm so super good i'm doing everything right everything is fine that i'm doing no you know not being on that side this for me doesn't make any sense but um but also being like, okay, I'm such a piece of shit, I hate myself, and, and everything that I do is just some bullshit. This is also not good, you know? Why? Anyway, uh, this willful ignorance of my problems and inability to see myself as flawed or a bad person has caused me to miss or refuse so many good opportunities in life because I defeat myself and squander my potential due to a self-inflicted lack of self-confidence and victim mindset. On top of that, I narcissistically think that I on the moral high ground, when in reality I am nowhere near it. I can't seem to recognize or integrate my flaws without flying back into old habits and defense mechanisms. I don't know how to address this because it is so deeply ingrained into my personality. There's also a large part of me that doesn't even want to because I have taught myself to be a helpless victim and learns to manipulate people through being polite and pathetic. I'm always convinced that I can't actually be treated because the benefits of my dysfunction have not been outweighed by the consequences yet, even though I seem I seem them being so in the near future. I see them being so in the near future. Edit, OP has a history of making posts like this. I no longer find this genuine, perhaps just another attention-seeking post. The fact you are recognizing the patterns is huge. You obviously have great awareness. There is always time to work on yourself, period. Is right, the reason we point out hypocrisy so much in politicians is because it is something we all have. Accepting it as a flaw and working on fixing yourself is what a majority of the population refuse to. Yeah, um, which by the way is actually kind of the case for a ton of things. Um, like, a ton of people do have to work on the same thing, you know, and a ton of people have the same problem. Sometimes it's a bit more, sometimes it's a bit less, you know, some people do have very niche problems because of some, I don't know, like niche dysfunction that they're having in terms of, um, actually, you know, physical inability. I mean, this is not something that a ton of people are going to have, still some people are going to have it. But, well, yeah, I mean, since I kind of also had to think about, like, being a hypocrite and or, like, seeing certain things in myself and, but not willing to do something about that, uh, makes it kind of clear for me that, well, this is probably going to be a problem more people are having or are seeing or maybe are not seeing. But as this other person also pointed out, it is huge that you, um, or that one sees patterns in oneself and um, I always point out and I always say and I've always said that this is the first step to getting better, you know, recognizing that something is wrong and actually seeing that you're doing something in a wrong way or you're doing something wrong is always going to be the first step, it's always going to be a good step, it's always going to be important. Don't compare others to yourself, it does nothing but hinder progress. Not necessarily, there's actually a video that I made about that. Um, to some degree, it is important to compare yourself to others because how could you know, um, well, what what rank you are, quote unquote, you know, if you know what I mean, like, how would you know if you're good or bad if you're not comparing yourself to somebody else? Of course, you can compare yourself to yourself, but life is about fucking competition. It is what it is, you know. There's always going to be other people. There's always going to be um, people with you competing about something, whether it is intentionally a competition or not, there's always going to be somebody on the other side, there's also always going to be a rival, there's always going to be somebody that, um, yeah, wants what you want to have, but there's only like one price, so who gets it? I read an article on how gratitude journaling can improve your mental and physical health, here are some examples of things gratitude journaling can benefit. Life satisfaction and ambition. There is research that supports the idea that part, part, what? Practicing, I'm sorry. Gratitude leads to greater self-improvement and motivation. 
Researchers found the students who practice gratitude felt more inspired to A. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, yeah, makes sense. Also depression, apparently blood pressure as well. Uh, diet. Dietary choices by decreasing negative emotions well. And workplace creativity. Well, well I don't know. I mean, I think everything that kind of makes you feel better is eventually going to lead to a ton of health benefits. Whether it is depression, whether it is blood pressure, which probably does have something to do with stress. Um, stress and, um, well, yeah, obviously when you are more happy than before, you're going to be more satisfied, you're going to be more ambitious, um, you're going to just be healthier and um, you're probably also going to make better decisions, you know, because... And this is something that I've been talking about before as well. Uh, being in a bad state mentally and making decisions is dumb. Being in an overly positive state and making important decisions and or decisions is also quite dumb. You know, it's it's always good to be in a neutral state to make very important decisions. You know, because when we are very, very happy, then we tend to make decisions that kind of maybe are a bit too huge you know, or, and, or impactful. On the other hand, when we are depressed, we are maybe just going to say no anyway, you know, or just to the whole thing. No, I'm not going to do it whatsoever, you know, it's, but it is difficult though. You know, it's also difficult to, to then be like, well, today I'm not in a good mood. So I'm probably shouldn't be, be making this decision. Like you can't do that as well. But I guess once again, realizing that you are in a bad state and knowing that, okay, maybe you're making a certain decision based on that state and kind of, um, you know, going more into the, the other direction, like being a bit more optimistic than you are at this point in time and or when you're very positive, being a bit more pessimistic than you are at this point might make sense. The best and most effective way to engage with new people is talk to them as if they were already your friends. If this is difficult for you, this might help you. Um, this is something that I've seen somebody doing to me quite lately. You know, they, they really shared some, or he really shared some intimate things with me. And um, he was like, well, yeah, you know, there's no reason for me not to share it. Of course, for some people, it might be like, okay, I don't just care about that. Just don't tell me, you know. And But on the other hand, it is like making yourself vulnerable, you know. But yeah, also... Um, I think treating somebody as if this person would already be your friend just uh, really does something in terms of, you know, bonding people, I think, a bit quicker. Um, not necessarily because you're going to be more open, but, well, I don't know. Like, we all know how friends are talking to each and another. And so I think when somebody starts talking to, to you in such a way, then you're you're probably also gonna talk back like that, you know, and or communicate back like that. I don't know, like it is as well something that I've seen. Um, besides, like being vulnerable, and besides just sharing some intimate things, but also just um, really, indeed, acting as if you have known somebody for quite some time. But not necessarily because you want to make friends and everything should be great and whatnot. But I don't know, like, this person did that to me not consciously. I would at least say, like, who knows. But it's pretty interesting. One last thing. Stoicism is about controlling your reactions instead of having no reaction at all. It seems like many people think stoicism means not doing or saying anything at all whenever someone insults you. It is true that nothing can harm you if you don't think that it harms you. So some people who want to practice stoicism just say stay quiet and let other people do as they please. They allow others to humiliate, to humiliate them in front of others or give them in important matters. But it is also true that the obstacle on the way becomes the way. That means that whenever you encounter a situation where someone is trying to hu humiliate you or attack you, it is an opportunity to practice certain virtues. But yeah, but really it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be talking back, but it always depends on the way you're talking back. You know, you could be an unpolite piece of shit and or you could be very polite, tell this person to shut the fuck up in a polite way and move on from there. So yeah think that I'm going to end the episode there. Wish you the best. See you soon.